Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha with another brand new edition of Colors of India, your weekly cultural diary. First up, as always, glimpses of the events we've covered for you during the past week. First up on the show today, a display of Japanese art in Delhi. Next, a display of representational art. And finally, a Bharat Natyam recital. Art lovers were in for a rare treat this week. An exhibition revolving around the cherry blossom theme was held for the first time in the national capital. Titled Sakura Exhibition, it captivated viewers and helped them know more about Japanese art and culture. Take a look for yourself. Sakura is a special flower for people in Japan. It is the Japanese word for a flowering cherry blossom tree. Derived from the word saku, sakura means to bloom or alternately to smile or laugh. Best known for its beauty, the eye-catching sakura is a symbolic flower of the spring which is also considered a time of renewal. The most interesting thing about sakura is that they bloom for a very short period only for about a week or so. Introduce people about this Japanese tree and its significance. The Seventh Sense organized an art workshop in the capital recently. The interactive art workshop was conducted by Japanese artist Hena C, who has specialized in various art forms. At the workshop, Hena taught participants how to paint sakura using the basic technique of watercolors. Hena says each flower of sakura blooms for a very short time, symbolizes lifespan which is also quite uncertain and that's why one should live life to the fullest. Basically it's like watercolor and I'm using like the basic techniques of watercolor to paint the Japanese cherry blossom or sakura and it's like using you know wet and wet different techniques and the main Japanese thing is the flower and obviously the spirit you paint the flower in so Priyanka Agrawal and Anika Kalra Kalha are the two brains behind the seventh sense before turning to art both Priyanka and Anika were journalists working with different media houses Anika says they have been art lovers for all their life and inspired by PM Modi's Make in India initiative. They set up their art institution about two years ago. The idea was to bring artists to the forefront so that they can pass on their knowledge of art to others. Yes, Priyanka and I have been journalists for the past 14 or 15 years uh, of our careers. But then, you know, with this whole Make in India campaign going on and new entrepreneurs coming into the picture, we wanted to give back to society also. We've been very, very closely knit with artists and potters for the past many, many years. And it was time to bring them to the forefront. It was time to have the public see what good work they do. So, you know, we started this workshop. It was a next step for us. We basically curate art and pottery. And then we wanted to give people something different and also give these artists an opportunity to come and interact with their clients. These are all well-known artists that we have on board and they come and hold these classes. They share their techniques, which they have mastered over the years with the people who come and register for these workshops. And then these people take home their masterpieces. All the participants thoroughly enjoyed the interactive session. Mm -hmm. 
the workshop was very well organized this is my third workshop with hana and i've done two workshops earlier with her and i think she's a great artist and something new to learn from her she's a patient person to be with her this particular workshop is literally bringing in a little bit of japanese culture into our country um nothing like learning the cherry blossom and having a japanese expert come and teach it to you also it's a small group much more personalized attention so i definitely picked up the technique easier in a more easier manner then i would in a larger group it's amazing and i'm definitely going to take this home and practice it and um, the teacher has been amazing this workshop this whole atmosphere is amazing so lots to learn from it the blooming of the sakura is considered a time for companionship and celebration that is why it is also considered auspicious sakura flowers has been an inspiration for people throughout the history of asia for many centuries poets philosophers and painters appreciate its beauty and peace of the blossoms in their works sakura or cherry blossom is a flower of several trees of genus prunus it is considered the national flower of japan from the late 19th century onward its cultivation spread across japan resulting in it becoming the most abundant species of the cherry tree right now there are many species of cherry blossom some of them like so many yoshino and yamazakura workshops like these are indeed a brilliant attempt to help people learn about this japanese art and the relevance of sakura flower in asian history vandana kumari's report for rajya sabha tv the sakura tree is a popular motif in japanese art as one of its national flowers the cherry blossom or sakura holds a special place in japanese culture we hope you like this unique exhibit detailing the significance of cherry blossoms in japanese art with that time for a short break on the program lots more coming up ahead do stay with us on the other side of the break an art exhibition displaying representational works Welcome back after the break. Let's now take you to another unique art show, an amalgamation of representational art. Showcasing the works of a group of artists, this exhibition appealed to viewers of different age groups. Art lovers in Delhi were in for a bright and colorful treat. at the India Habitat Center recently A group art show titled Tree Maestros exhibited some fascinating paintings in oil and acrylic catching the attention of viewers The show was an amalgamation of representational art showcasing the phenomenal works of a talented group of artists Niren Sen Gupta, Nupur Kundu and Niladri Pal What was so unique about this exhibition was the display of works in large size formats which allowed viewers to enjoy their works examine the detailing and also the first hand representative techniques of these senior artists Another interesting aspect was that all participating artists had their names beginning with the alphabet N Curator Nipun says it was all carefully planned keeping the show's theme in mind we had our concept in mind of uh, displaying the works here by all the three artists uh, which whose name starts with n which includes nareen sen gupta niladri pal and nupur kundu all three and apart from that my name is also nipun so so all the ends are been categorized out here in uh, in one single exhibition which we had planned long time ago uh, so we had this concept in our mind that uh, we should have something on the lines of rhythm dance and music so something or the other is related to music and dance in their own personal lives which they have portrayed and displayed in uh, their works the artists celebrated the theme of the show in their works painter and dancer nupur kundu chose abstract and some sculpture forms to capture the theme classical dance and painting was brought together so effortlessly and vivaciously on her canvas 
as well as in the forms of her sculptures. Dance is a part of uh, Nupur Kundu's life as well because she is herself a dancer and she has just uh, displayed all the works here on the lines of dance only. Same ways, uh, Niladri does majority of the figurative works that you can see here. Uh, figurative works are also on the uh, lines of uh, dance that you can see. Artist Niladri Paul picked figurative images to display the theme. Most of his work showed the portrayals of women and their love for music and dance. His images of the youthful female figure as central to space had a strong, realistic format. The stark features of the faces were covered with dubs of pinks and blues, violets and crimson, ably contrasted against a plain backdrop, which too was dotted with whimsical baubles of colour daubs. Although the work seemed to extol the charms of youth, which continues to hold sway despite societal aberrations, which the artist had shown through his random colour splatterings. This is a good exhibition over there, good presentation and curating by Nippon is very nicely. Innovation function is good, artists are good. Senior artist Niren Sengupta's paintings were equally captivating. His works bore a sensory quality, suggestive of the solidity of form through their squared chunkiness. His brilliant color palette choices, as well as the astute placements of his forms, were feast for the eyes. Indeed, the group show was truly a delight for those who visited the gallery. This pictorial engagement was not a rehash of old works by these artists. It was a collection of fresh canvases that dazzled with the brilliance of colour applications and also definable strokes. Indeed, true to the saying that good things come in threes, this exhibition also celebrated the individual expressions of these three artists and in turn captivating the viewers. On that note, time for another quick break. Still more coming up on the programme. Don't go anywhere. On the other side, a dance presentation. Welcome back once again. So after the wonderful display of artworks, let's now take you to a Bharatnatyam recital by Radhika Ramanujan. Bharat Matyam exponent Radhika Ramanujan danced to her heart's content, making sure everything was in place to make her performance exhilarating. Radhika opened her recital with a traditional Mallari, an invocatory piece to Devi, followed by Varnam. Her solo recital was a spontaneous expression of powerful emotions and feelings. Born in Bengaluru, a hub of art and culture, Radhika started learning Bharatnatyam at a very young age. She says it was her mother who wanted her to learn Bharatnatyam dance and sensed her interest in the same.
She received her training from dancer Kapil Guru, Kiran Subramaniam and Sandhya Kiran. Radhika was hardly 13 years old when she gave her first performance on stage. Till now, she has performed on several prestigious platforms within India and abroad. It so happens that in South India, basically, uh, like most of the girls are initiated into music, classical music or dance. So my, maybe my mother also just put me into dance. <laughs> and from then on, I found really good gurus, teachers who taught me. And so interest was there. And my teacher taught me really, really well. The best of Radhika's dancing was witnessed during the central piece Varnam, depicting a young woman's passion for Lord Shiva. In this piece, the Naika or heroine experiences a deep longing and a physical desire to unite with her Lord Shiva. Engulfed in her desire, hallucinating the embrace of Shiva, and she traverses the varied emotions beseeches her Sakhi to fetch her Lord immediately. The dancer presented each item with fluency and grace. What doubled the charm of her performance was her stunning expressions and lyrical movements. Her footwork was commendable too. recital with a traditional Mallari and then move on to do a piece on Devi. So here the Devi is the embodiment and epitome of love. So from there I begin. So the Devi is uh, in love with Shiva. So which Shiva? The Shiva who stays in Chidambaram and she says I'm passionately in love with him and she tells her friend, the friend uh, Sakhi to go and bring him 
so that you know the whatever the desire she is feeling she wants to uh, show it to him and give it to him so that that's the main piece the varnam in karahar priya ragam mahatidal Radhika stole the show with her energetic, expressive and elegant performance. Her presentation showed her confidence and natural ease as well as her passion for dance. Her eloquent moves and abhinay skills added thrill to her performance leaving the audience asking for more And time now for the culture calendar of the week that tells you all about the important cultural events taking place in your city Bengaluru will host an event Shades of Love Naikas of Mahabharat at Lahi Lahi 80 feet road Indra Nagar 7:30 pm on 3rd August An event Guruve Nama will be held at the Stein Auditorium India Habitat Center Lodi Road 7 pm onwards on 29th and 30th of July Eastwards in Kolkata Sarang Sunday is scheduled to be held at Satyajit Ray Auditorium Rabindranath Tagore Center ICCR 9:30 am on 4th August In Mumbai a play Broken Images will be staged at St Andrew's Auditorium Bandra West 7:30 pm again on the 4th of August and music lovers in Hyderabad can enjoy melodious moments with Sunita Upadrash at Chilpkala Vedika High Tech City Main Road 6:30 pm on the 4th of August If you know about some interesting cultural events taking place in your city you can write to us on sabrang.rstv@gmail.com We'll try and include those in our program. You can also watch our program on YouTube and send your feedback and suggestions about whether you like the show or not. For now, that's it from us in this edition of Colors of India. We'll be back same time next week with another brand new edition of the program. Until then, take good care of yourself. It's a goodbye from the entire team.